Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of the English Rambler. Today I'm in North Keswick and the surrounding areas. It's a nice bright-ish day, a little bit windy as you can probably hear on the camera, but I just wanted to come down here quickly and show you North Keswick for a few reasons. Give you a little bit of history and a little bit of note on the wildlife here. As you can see from around here, we're right on the edge. Over there is the Beauty Firth, and this is the edge of the Moray Firth running in. Over there, that's Inverness and South Keswick, and that's the Keswick Bridge you will cross if you're going up the east side of the North Coast 500. There's been uh, archaeological evidence found that people have been living in and around this area for the past 5,000 years. There was also a ferry that used to run here from North Keswick to South Keswick across the Firth. Over there is the pier where people and goods used to get on, cross over the boat of the Firth and head over there to the South Keswick there in Inverness. Now ferries used to run across this firth right up until July 1982 when the bridge there, Keswick Bridge, was, had finished completion. They decided in the 1970s there were so many people and goods travelling over the firth here that they had to divert the A9 and get it to cross over the firth. People had to do this here because if you were to travel along the road from North Keswick round to Inverness, it would be a 22 mile journey one way. So a 44 mile round trip. And I know where I come from, the southeast of England, there is no way you catch me going into town on a 44 mile round trip. Now over there is the Bewley Firth and we're at the end of the Moray Firth here. If you're lucky enough, you'll be able to see dolphins here in the water and even if you're even more lucky you'll be able to see sea otters but I've seen one sea otter since I've been up here in eight years uh, now our next stop is to go over to Red Castle and Ord Hill uh, they'll be able to give you a bit more historical knowledge but I just wanted to give you a little rundown of North Keswick just in case you want to come down here and come dolphin spotting or there's a couple of walks around here which would be very interesting. I'm going to leave you with a few little moments of the village so you can get an idea of the place. But out there, a Cranach was discovered. For those of you that don't know what a Cranach is, it's a little housing dwelling or houses that were built out into the water. Uh, I believe you get them down the east coast of England, or they were down the east coast of England as well, along uh, during the Iron Age and uh, Bronze Age. Uh, they went out into the firth there, they were built of wood mainly, built of wood, uh, although on the west coast of Scotland you'll find they're actually built out into, uh, built out of stone because there's very few trees out that way, there never really has been, so they're made out of stone. But I've just cut up the path here to Red Castle, as you can see there's a little waterway cut through there from the little turning off point off the main road along that coastal road that you'll follow and when you come along here please veer right you don't want to be walking into somebody's house there so you veer right along this path and this path here will take us up to Red Castle a little bit muddy but they've redone the bridges since I was last down here so, and then you just begin to see Red Castle over here. Lovely little burn 
running underneath here. You can tell it's middle of the March. Look at all those snowdrops. Absolutely beautiful. So, as I was saying, uh, William the Lion, this was his second castle that he built here on the Black Isle. Um, in 1455, the Black Isle was actually given over to, this, to the Crown Estate. Uh, and that's the Scottish Crown Estate, not the English one. There we go. Follow the sign up here. More lovely snowdrops. So it swapped hands a few times, but by 1492, the castle and the lands were under control of Kenneth Mackenzie and remained in possession of Clan Mackenzie until 1790. Clan Mackenzie was the dominant clan in this area, or ended up being the dominant clan in this area. And as you can see, Red Castle has seen better days. And please follow the sign, do not enter this building. You'll see why in a minute. The present building though is actually dated to 1641, but it incorporates masonry from the original build from William the Lion. Um, by World War II, this building was requisitioned by the British Army and then everything was taken out of it at the, by the end of the 1950s and was just left to ruin. Which is a bit of a shame really, because it would have been a fantastic building had it been kept up to date. Let's go through this little gate here. There we go. And look. Here we go. See, the castle's definitely seen better days. As I say, such a shame that it was left to get into this state. A beautiful little castle. Here we go, there's a new sign. Taking up, look at that. That's what it would have looked like. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that one with it shone up. Hope you can see that well enough on the camera. Should do, it's 4K. But you never know. Around the edge of the castle. Look at that. Let's just walk along a little bit so you guys can get a really good look at it. It's a nice little spot to come to, just to have a look around. Not only is it falling apart and there's CCTV everywhere, you can't go in, but this little dip down here is what it's falling into. There you go. Ooh, probably get a little bit of the sun there. And here was a little bit of an add-on from the castle. To be honest, this stone looks like it was actually added on a lot longer after it's built, after it being rebuilt there in the 17th century. There we go. Come right the way down. Ah. That's where people have gone into it. And get another look from the back. There we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to do another video at some point on the clans in the different areas that we're in. Um, but different areas chopped and changed clans depending on the centuries. Uh, but as I say, Clan Mackenzie seems to be the most dominant clan by the time the clans were really disbanded. Oh look, 1641, there you go. By the time the clans 
really lost their power after the Battle of Culloden and the uh, English took over. Um, so it's just a little walk around here. Wow, it's absolutely covered in snowdrops. So yeah, just a little, uh, just a little walk around. A lot of these spaces are just a little place to kind of come, have a quick look, maybe get out your lunch, ha have a cup of tea and a flask or something like that, and then move on to somewhere else. But this little path should end up bringing you round back down to where we started the video at the first place. There's another little part of the burn. Now when I first arrived here, all this was absolutely covered in trees. But they've thinned the trees out, as you can see there, to allow growth to come from underneath. And there's a walk up there to a more private estate up there. But, um, so yeah guys, it's just a little hamlet. But as I say, it's the second uh, castle that was built here by William the Lion, here on the Black Isle. It's only just the Black Isle, I think. Um, but as you can see out here, the Cranach is just out there. Uh, if you're lucky at low tide, you'll be able to see it. Um, this is the place to park, by the way, and sit down with your food. If you've got a little family, something like that. You know, maybe you can do this in a little bit of uh, a morning session. Uh, go to North Keswick, maybe go spot some dolphins, something like that. Uh, come on over here to Red Castle and pop off over to Ward Hill, which is where I'm going now. Coming here to Ward Hill is a great place to spend a couple of hours. Around the base of the hill, around the base of the fort, you have a lovely circular walk. It'll take you about an hour and a half, two hours, depends if you have kids or not. There's some spectacular views, one of them here looking right over Inverness and the Kesset Bridge. Just flip this around to show you. There we go, that's the Kesset Bridge there. Looking right the way over Inverness and beyond. You've got the Monalia Hills over there in the background. And it really gives you a good sense of why they would have built a fort, fort right at the top of this hill. I will now take you to a viewpoint that will overlook North Keswick. So there we are. The houses down there are North Keswick, where we were earlier on in the video, pointing towards the Beauty Firth. You've got the Munro there in the background, and Red Castle is just tucked up behind that little road going around that little hill there. So I take the circular path running from the car park and heading round to your right. You can go left if you like as well. You'll also, if you take that path, see Kilmuir, which is just a row of a few houses just right the way down there on the Moray Firth. Also, I wanted to say to you guys, if you follow me there on Patreon, uh, you'll get some edited clips, or unedited clips, of the recordings I've been taking. Find out stories of my stick, where it came from, and what the deal is with that as well as a few other things uh, about keeping you up to date with the local area and what's been going on so I'll take you round now to the path here and you can see where to go so you follow the pathway circular going right out the car park and as you come to this point here which is the second viewing spot looking over North Keswick that we just viewed. If you turn left and head up this pathway here, so the red route, this will take us all the way up 
to the fort. I'll see you up at the fort. So here we are at the beginning of the fort and uh, made our way right the way up that path that I showed you. Uh, when you arrive, this is what it would look like. So you've got the steps there leading up and around and that'll take us up to the final part of the fort and you'll also see this here as well a little plaque talking about it being the hub of the highlands follow me on the way up so although this fort here would have been used late bronze age early iron age or dates back to uh, they would have been in and out of use throughout that period right the way up until the picks were using them as a little base for themselves as well unfortunately not much stands today just a big pile of stones but if you can imagine these trees not being here as they would have been cut away so you would have had a great overview of the Mori Firth you can see traders coming up and along and around as well as invaders because believe you me it's it can be quite a walk right up there from the bottom um, anyway have a look around with me see here the beginning of where the fort is not bad for something that's been out of use for three, four, five thousand years. There's little paths running all the way around here as we go up the centre path here. And here we are, right at the very top of the foot. This little cairn here, commemorating the very top. You can go try and find yourself a stone and add to it if I can find a stone. Probably not. And then add your little stone to the top of this. As I say, imagine those trees not being here. You get good views there looking north and then towards the Beauty Firth that way and over the Moray Firth that way. It would have been very, very difficult to take this position at that point in time. You see invaders coming from a mile off and it's not too far a walk down to the shoreline to go meet traders to get supplies and goods. And that pretty much concludes our our little journey of North Keswick and the surrounding areas. I hope you've enjoyed the first episode. There are many more to come. Next episode, we're going towards Milwaukee. We're going to have a couple of walks around there, tell you about a little history of the Clutie Well, as well as take a viewpoint from one of the, uh, as well as take a viewpoint from one of the bird watching spots just off the main road as you go through the Black Isle. So as I say, hope you enjoyed the first video. Be great to see you back on the next. Please support me on all the channels that I've told you about. And until then guys, see you then. Bye for now.